If you've ever battled algae in your saltwater aquarium, you know how fast it can go from a minor nuisance to a full-blown takeover. We're digging into how to keep algae under control, and more importantly, how to prevent it from becoming a reoccurring issue. I am Jess, and this is episode 21 of Year of the Reef. Algae isn't just cosmetic it's often a warning sign that something is out of balance. Whether that's nutrients, lighting, water flow, or even microbial health. By developing good habits, using the right tools, and understanding the causes, you can create an aquarium where nuisance algae struggles to take hold. Consistent maintenance is your strongest defense. Perform regular water changes to export dissolved nutrients before they can fuel algae growth. Clean mechanical filtration, like filter socks and sponges on schedule. Replace chemical media before it's exhausted and vacuum detritus from the sand bed, rock crevices, and sump chambers. Your protein skimmer is another critical tool. Properly sized and tuned in, it removes organic waste before it breaks down into nitrate and phosphate. Many reef keepers also run a refugium with macroalgae, such as Chetomorpha, which naturally absorbs nutrients and outcompetes problem algae. Lighting can be a major contributor. Too much intensity, long photo periods, or the wrong spectrum can all trigger blooms. Most roof tanks do well with eight to 10 hours of light per day. Cutting back on white and red light while emphasizing blue heavy spectrums can reduce algae growth while still supporting coral health and coloration. Flow plays a big role too. Algae and cyanobacteria thrive in dead spots where detritus settles. Use strategically placed power heads to create full tank circulation so organics remain suspended and can be removed by filtration. A diverse cleanup crew is essential for ongoing control. Turbo and trochus snails excel at cleaning glass and rock. Hermit crabs and serra snails work in tight spaces. Conks and serra snails turn over the sand bed, preventing buildup. In larger tanks, tangs and fox faces are active grazers, while algae blennies contribute steady targeted control. Let's take a look at the most common nuisance algae you might encounter in a reef tank, how to identify them, and what to do about them when they show up. Diatoms are usually the first to bloom in a new tank. Diatoms show up as a brown, dusty coating on sand, rocks, and glass, fueled by silicates in the water. They are mostly harmless and fade as the tank matures. You can speed up this process by adding serra snails and maintaining good water quality through regular changes and phosphate management. Green hair algae is one of the most common and stubborn type. It forms long green strands that quickly overtake rock work. It thrives in high nutrient systems with poor filtration or excessive lighting. Begin with manual removal, pooling or siphoning during water changes, then reduce nutrient inputs. Improving skimming, feeding sparsely, increase water changes, and run phosphate movers like GFO. Turbo snails, algae blennies, sea hares, and tangs are excellent grazers. Severely infested rocks may need to be scrubbed outside of the tank. Turf algae forms thick, dense mats that are difficult to remove and often resistant to most grazers. It commonly develops in systems with aged or nutrient-saturated rock and weak nutrient export. Improve skimming, perform thorough substrate cleaning, and consider grazers like fox faces, certain tangs, or tuxedo and pincushion urchins. Persistent infestations may require physically removing and scrubbing the affected rock. Bryopsis is recognized by its feathery fronds. Bryopsis is invasive and can grow in both low and high nutrient systems. Manual remover is rarely affected because it roots deeply into the rock. The most reliable treatment is dosing fluconazole, which usually eliminates it in a few weeks. Rabbitfish and sea hares may help in some cases, but results vary. Bubble algae appear as shiny green bubbles attached to rocks or coral bases. While it looks harmless, popping these bubbles releases spores that spread the problem. The safest removal method is to carefully extract them outside the tank. Owl crabs are among the few known grazers, but their appetite for bubble algae can decrease over time. Combining manual removal with emerald crab grazing works best. Prevent future outbreaks by quarantining new rock and coral frags. Cyanobacteria, often called red slime algae, is not true algae, but photosynthetic bacteria. Cyano forms slimy mats, usually red or purple, on sand, rock, and even corals. It thrives in areas with low flow and excess nutrients. Increase flow to problem spots, reduce feeding, siphon affected areas during water changes, and run phosphate removing media. Dosing beneficial bacteria can help restore balance. In persistent cases, chemical treatments like ChemiClean may be used after correcting underlying causes. Dinoflagellates are one of the most dreaded problems in reef keeping. 
They appear as brown slimy strings with trapped air bubbles and often arise in ultra low nutrient systems. They can release toxins harmful to invertebrates and corals. Combat them with daily siphoning, frequent filter sock changes, and UV sterilization to target the free floating stage. Raising nitrate and phosphate levels slightly can help restore microbial diversity, making it harder for dinos to dominate. Dosing beneficial bacteria in a three to five day blackout can also be effective. Patience and steady nutrient balance are critical. There's no single product or quick fix for algae. Success comes from balance, consistent maintenance, nutrient control, appropriate lighting, strong flow, and a very clean up crew. With these strategies in place, algae becomes just part of the ecosystem, managed and under control rather than a constant battle. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Year of the Reef. If you found it helpful, subscribe, give us a like, and explore the rest of the series for more reef keeping insights.